I think the economics profession was making tremendous money, tremendous money in consulting for the financial sector. And many of the theories were not what you might call investigation and illumination of how financial markets worked. They were portraits painted like a marketing document for how finance needed to be unshackled so the powerful could make even more money. And I think they did a great disservice to mankind, and we're cleaning up after that right now. And I don't believe it's all corruption. I don't believe it's just that people took the money, got paid, and, and created a false vision. But I think the people who have the vision in a sincere belief that conformed to what, say, the investment bankers and hedge fund managers wanted were the people who got elevated in society, made a lot of money, became prominent. So they were used as marketing vehicles and they were not uh, adequately skeptical as scientists of, of what their vision, uh, what the flaws in their vision might be. The world is always uncertain. No one can see in the crystal ball of the future. So when people become anxious, they want the expert to tell them what's going to happen. And they feel good when their anxiety is relieved because they think they understand the future. But if the expert, instead of telling the truth, is telling snake oil a false story, when that is unmasked, the expert becomes the scapegoat. And the expert, meaning the economist profession, is now a scapegoat rather than someone who is, uh, which you might call, held in high regard. And I think it's a big problem. One of the problems, what uh, Ken Rogoff spoke earlier today about what he called ex externalities. He was talking about the environment and the spillovers. And the spillovers, when exper expertise is bad, like in the movie Inside Job that won the Academy Award, the Oscar, is that people were serving power, they weren't serving the people. Economists are very much accused of having uh, what you might call only see the economy through the eyes of the model as opposed to seeing the economy and building the model as a map of what reality is. And I think that's been a valid criticism in recent years where the obsession with technique has dominated the scientific need to understand the world. And formalism, which is what modeling is, is very, very different than science. I've often said that economists are the victim of the Thirty Years' War because the Thirty Years' War was a dreadful, dreadful, horrible time in Europe. And after the Thirty Years' War, all the humanists like Michel de Montaigne or Shakespeare or Francis Bacon were thrown out and René Descartes took over and the Enlightenment took over looking for universal laws, looking for mathematics and making high theory much more important than real observation of the world, textured context and what have you. So economists now worship at the altar of abstract theory, which was the product of the fear and the anxiety that followed the Thirty Years' War 350 years ago. And it's time to re-examine our methods very, very fundamentally. David Colander, who's a famous uh, economist in America at Middlebury College, researches the economics profession, and he, he takes polls of graduate students. And 85% say that they need to know a lot about the mathematics. Only 13% say they need to know anything about the economy in order to become an economist. So I think we are in a period where we've gone very, very far in the direction of basically getting a PhD in modeling technique not a PhD in economics. When it comes to advising the governments, I'm always reminded that Joseph Schumpeter said uh, when asked, what is economics about? He said three things, politics, politics, and politics. And so at the core, economics is about politics and about power. And the question for the economist is, 
whose power are you going to serve as an expert? Are you going to serve the public good of society? Are you going to serve private consulting patrons? Are you going to serve institutions of power? Or are you going to serve the people more generally? And those questions face every individual, wherever they are in life, but a public expert in particular. There are several modifications to economics teaching that need to take place. The first is, rather than teaching economics 101, introductory economics, as an indoctrination in method, they should teach it as a course in the philosophy of science where the subject is economics and its assumptions and the trade-offs and the flaws as well as the strengths are explored skeptically on behalf of the student. So that, that would help create a humility about economics and what it, uh, what it can do or can't do. The second dimension is the pendulum between what I would call induction, looking at the world, and deduction, looking inside the math and models, has swung very far in favor of deduction. So understanding the context of institutions, understanding economic history, which is real episodes, and particularly understanding the history of economic thought, where the subject is economic thinking, embedded in the real context of the problems of the day, the vested interests of the day, the various challenges, the state of technology, would help people to develop a more humble and realistic sense of what economic thinking uh, is all about, what it, what it pretends.